Hello. Hello. Hi. How Hi. are you? Yeah, I'm good, Joshua. How are you doing? Yeah, not too bad at all, thanks. Good. I just made this skin of my teeth. I've just been at the hospital for like for the last 16 hours or so. My sister-in-law has just given birth and it was a, it oh, was wow. a chaos. <laughs> oh, congratulations. At least it's there for good reasons rather than anything bad. Yeah, yeah. No, definitely but literally i've just got back to to her house actually i've left her at the hospital and um here i am not <laughs> live yet am i no <laughs> perfect okay well what we're happy to do is happy just to kick kick things off um have you got a presentation or a demo to run through yeah yeah so i've got a couple of things so i've got um a presentation and um and i'll take people through my story and then I will show them a bit of a day in the life using a demonstration of the MyPDA software. Um, and yeah, and just show them. And if they've got any Q&A at the end, then we can do that. So I'm thinking probably, um, probably no more than 45 minutes for the two, you know, for the presentation and the demo. Um, yeah. And then if anyone's got any Q&A, so I don't know if, you know, does that fit in with, with what you're thinking? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've, we've got an hour, um, so we can structure that however we need. Um, okay. If we get some questions okay. for you, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll just kind of see what happens. Yeah, perfect. And um, and I might, I've got my mobile here as well, so I can see questions, but I might not spot them yeah. if I'm carried away. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what we'll do is we'll recap on the questions. And there is a 20 second delay between here and Facebook. Um, so if anything looks out of order, that's why. <laughs> okay. okay. No, that's cool. Um, let me just check. I can share my screen with you. Bear with me. Um, let's try this one. Um, where are we? Um, can you see my screen? Yep. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. What I'll do is I'll um, turn my camera and mic off, um, hand it over to you, and I'll just jump back on at the end of the Q&A. Okay, so um, yeah, that'd be perfect. Yeah, perfect. Good, good to go. All live now. You ready to fish bowl, Josh? Yep, yeah, ready to go. Yeah, I'm good to go, yeah? Yep. Yeah. Fantastic, thank you. Um, hi everyone, um, thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Claire Sheehan. I am the founder of MyPDA, the Property Developers Assistant. Um, and I've literally just got um, to my location to do this presentation. I've been at the hospital for the last um, 16 hours or so. I'm not sure if somebody's trying to say something. Can, can I have a thumbs up if you can hear me? Yeah, yeah, everything's good. This oh, side. Okay, good. Yeah. It was just um, cutting out a little bit for me. Perfect. Um, yeah, so my sister-in-law um, uh, has just had a baby and um, I was her birthing partner. And, and um, unfortunately, things took a bit of a complication. Um, it was all supposed to happen yesterday, but didn't happen. Um, so I've literally just got, made it skin of my teeth here right now. To do the presentation so i'm really really pleased that that i made it um but what i'm going to talk to you about today or before i talk to you um about the agenda first of all i just want to say a massive thank you um to everybody for supporting the nhs now i've been off of social media for the last 16 hours or so so i don't actually know what the the latest is in terms of the um um, the, the funding and the donations. So I'm hoping that it's way over 10,000 um, by now. I'm sure it is. Um, but if you haven't donated yet, please do dig deep, be generous, and, um, and here's the link. But also a massive shout out to, um, to Joshua and Alice for pulling this together. I mean, it's such a great cause. Um, and not just for COVID, to be honest. And I know that this is all about helping the NHS to, um, to keep working through this COVID um, pandemic. But also for the NHS, I've seen it firsthand today with the maternity units. You know, they don't stop and, and it's really important to, to keep everybody healthy and well. And they do an amazing job and they're all there in all of the gear. But, you know, they, they have to get 
up close and personal with these guys that are having babies and, and it was just phenom phenomenal to see. So please do dig deep and I'm sure we're all given a, a virtual um, clap to Alice and Joshua. So what we're going to talk about today, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about us um, and my story and also how PropTech can help property developers. Um, and I'm going to do a little bit of a day in the life, uh, a short demonstration of my PDA to show you how to find sites, um, analyze them really quickly and keep yourself accountable amongst other things. And then we'll do a bit of a Q&A at the end. Um, so I'm not apologizing for the, um, for the link here about the donations. If you can, please do um, dig deep and we'll see that link throughout the agenda. Um, so the bit about us. So um, as I said, I'm Claire Sheer and my husband Alistair um, and I, we are the founders of MyPDA, which is the Property Developers Assistant. Um, we're both finance profess professionals. Um, I'm, my background is all in credit management, business to business um, and collections management. Alistair is the head of IT finance for um, a large airline. Um, and between us, we've got over 15 years of experience of developing um, properties. And our main focus has been on um, buy to let. So purchasing properties, refurbing them, and then keeping them for our buy to let business. And we built up a multi-million pound portfolio um, over the last few years. Um, but now we're starting to leverage from our financial expertise and our you know, corporate experience. And I'll tell you a little bit about that next. Um, but ultimately, you know, we are passionate about property, which is what this weekend is all about. Um, you know, which they've put on and we've got some amazing content, some great speakers. Um, but personally, you know, I love technology and I love automated solutions. And you'll see so from some of the other slides that I'm going to go to um, how, you know, how it drives everything I've done for the last 20 odd years. And of course, like everybody, we like life, right? Um, so a bit about me. So my corporate life, I started um, uh, way back when in credit and collections all around the finance area. Um, I'm a qualified um, credit manager with the Chartered Institute of Credit Management. Um, I'm also a Prince 2 practitioner, so it's a project management qualification. And I've implemented lots of different projects and I've been involved in or a member of. Um, and I'm also, I have been for the last 10, 12 years, an independent consultant um, focusing on, so my niche has been on order to cash process the end to end for big, big corporations. Um, so for years I've been operational and I've been leading teams um, and it does tend to be around the business to business with credit and collections. Um, but, you know, I need to move my screen because I don't know if you can see this. Um, but here, you know, cash is king. Um, and that has been the one of the um, overriding um, strap lines, if you like, for me for years and years and years because of what I've been involved with, with cash flow. Um, it's every company, you know, cash is king. You need to get it in. And, it, you know, we hear more of that right now um, because in this COVID um, situation that we're in, companies need to keep their cash. They need to do things so that they, you know, they're not paying their supplies for everything on time so that they can stay alive. And it's not just the small companies um, and the small property developers. It is also the big corporations. Everybody is key keeping hold of their cash as much as they can so that they can survive. Um, and it's no different to what I've been doing for the last 20 odd years. Um, so as I said, you know, I've, I've implemented um, and been involved with many, many project management um, or projects for corporations. And it's mainly been around or involved in cash flow improvements. So how can we get the cash in faster? How can we stop the dispute so that, again, there's no issue for the customer making a payment? all within um, mitigating the credit risk um, for, from our debtors. Um, and I've implemented and set up lots of um, shared service centers, offshore and inshore, so in the UK and outside, and also centralized teams. So in Europe, for example, I've centralized a whole team into Barcelona many years ago. Um, and that was all about bringing efficiencies through um, wage arbitrage and you know, cost effectiveness for um, amalgamating tools and so on and um, and also process engineering I love process engineering and getting rid of waste because why would we um, you know we often do and everybody is um, um, is fallible to this if we have a process and we just tend to follow it day in and day out there could be lots of steps in there that we don't need to do 
um, that perhaps some technology could do it or perhaps we don't need to do it at all when it's just waste. So I've been involved in lots of process engineering to get lots of efficiencies. Now, this has all been underpinned by SaaS solutions and I've implemented many, many different SaaS, which is software as a solution. Now, you'll see throughout the presentation um, that I'm all about working smarter using technology. I'm a great believer in that with automated technology. Um, but to move on a little bit in terms of, um, you know, for me, life, property and a little bit of money. I'm trying to move this to the side. Um, so in the 90s and the noughties, um, you know, I spent time buying and renovating properties. And I became an accidental landlord um, early in um, 20, 2003, I think it was. Um, you know, and I was pretty content with what I was doing. You know, I enjoyed my work. Um, I'm a successful business consultant, you know, and I've loved doing what I've been doing for many years. But then there's the grind. So I was working um, and then saving the money. You know, many of us do this. We do, do this day in and day out. And often that's why we're in property now, because we want something different. Um, so, you know, work saving the money and then maybe a little bit of partying um, and then it's on repeat and we do it again and then we do it again and then we do it again and you know to a certain extent I was quite content to do that in that rat race but life can change so so very quickly um, and that's what I wanted to talk to you about today um, in terms of my story so for me life did change very quickly in 2012 so the middle of January, I was just about to buy this little baby. Um, I've always wanted to have my own horse. And um, I got to a position where um, I was going to buy one and I found him and, and he was amazing. And a couple of weeks later, um, unfortunately, I was diagnosed with breast cancer on the 27th of January. And I spent... I spent a year going through treatment, um, which included chemotherapy, um, where I, I lost my hair. So you can see it by April, and in fact, it happened even before then. Um, I went from this being, you know, had nice long hair to nothing. And that was a big deal for me, as it is for many people. Um, but I had, had an aggressive form of breast cancer, and they needed to treat it quite aggressively as well. So I had intensive chemotherapy. Normally you have it every three weeks and I had it every two weeks um, and went through basically a year of hell. So operations, chemotherapy, <clears throat> um, radi radiotherapy and many other things. Um, but, you know, having a diagnosis like that and I genuinely thought that at the end of January and beginning of Feb that I was going to die. And, and it makes you think, and it made me think, I want something different. Although I was enjoying my life, I don't want to be um, answerable to a big corporation or having to work. I want the choice. I want the life choice to do something different. <clears throat> and, you know, in today's environment, again, with COVID, um, you know, we're seeing, it goes back to the NHS and, and helping them um, to do, to carry on working because they are, it's not, just about them treating the people that are dealing with covid it's about them treating people with things like cancer because this doesn't stop you know mental health doesn't stop cancers don't stop people still need treatment and unfortunately they're not getting everything at the moment because other things are taking a priority um, but you know they are all doing such an amazing job so please please do donate um, but going back to this you know it absolutely changed my outlook and what i wanted to do in life um, so then I started thinking about, okay, that work-life balance, um, you know, I want something different. I still need to work, so I need to pay the bills, but I want that work-life balance. And as we're saying, you know, I want the choice to be able to work or not to work. So in 2013, the year after, um, well, the, the next year following my treatment, I was very fortunate enough to go um, and have the life balance um, for three months, my husband and I, we went to um, Australia and New Zealand. We went traveling for three months and had a fantastic time. And it was a real good taste of what, what we want life to, to be like, but how we were going to do that and fund it in the future, we didn't quite know yet. Um, so, you know, I built up my strength again for recovery. I um, walked up volcanoes. God knows how I did that, to be honest. If you're familiar with Lord of the Rings um, and The Hobbit, 
So, you know, this is me, I'm quite short, some of you will know, um, and I fit in the uh, Hobbit hole quite nicely. Um, it gave me, and there's a theme here, I've got a big thing about, I did have a thing about losing my hair, as many people do, but um, my hair was growing back. Thank God I was away for three months while that was in that awful stage. But then it, it, it got better. I got better. I was full of health um, by the end of our travels, which was here. But then we came back um, and then it's back to work. So back to work and back doing the same old grind, saving the money. Um, so came back and I was doing that for a couple of years, really, again, but still searching for what else could we do? Um, so then in 2015, um, we read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Now, like many, many people, that really changed our outlook with money and what we could do. So rather than have that save, save, save philosophy, it was like, let's make our money work for us. And I was very fortunate enough to have a little bit of a pot of money that I'd built up through my consultancy, which I hadn't taken down in dividends because I wanted to be tax efficient. And I really didn't know what I wanted to do with it. So this was a bit of a game changer for us. And then we went ahead and bought um, single buy to lets. Um, and then that started off on our passive income. So that gave us the opportunity for, you know, making those life choices because we had a passive income, but it wasn't enough. So sink buy buying those single buy to lets were just not getting us to where we wanted to be so that we could have that future cho choice. Um, and then, okay, so again, we were still going on that same journey, but we wanted to be inspired. So in 2017, again, we went through another chapter in terms of our property um, journey. And we, Alistair and I, we attended one of the Excel shows about property to try and get inspired. And we spent the whole day going around listening to lots of different seminars. You know, there were some good talks there, but nothing was really getting to me and inspiring me. Uh, for what I wanted to do or what I felt would, would, was right for us and our fit. Um, Alistair met Lloyd Girardi um, from the White Box um, crew. And um, Alistair came back and said, you know, I've met this guy. They do this build to rent. I'm quite interested in that. I think it might fit us, you know, what we want to do. So he went to their one day course, came back and was really enthusiastic. Now, we're, you know, Alistair's a financial accountant. Um, and we're both, I'm credit management, we're quite risk averse and we're quite skeptical. But he came back really enthused, like, yeah, come on, let's go on this three-day course. And I'll be very honest with you, we went on the, the three-day uh, property developer secret course with them, all about build to rent. But beforehand, I kept saying, I don't understand what they can talk about for three days. I was so naive. I really did not have a clue. But you don't know what you don't know sometimes. Um, so we went on the three day course and then we got inspired. So we wanted to stop buying those single buy to lets. We saw that there was a better way, a quicker way um, of, of creating a better passive income. Um, and so let's embark on a build to rent strategy where let's find some land or some property and going to change that. Um, so I signed up for their mastermind program um, with White Box because um, it was important. Again, you know, I was I knew nothing and, um, and I needed to, to learn everything. Um, so, you know, I had the financial ac acronym, but I wanted to understand about all the ins and outs of, of property development. Um, so, you know, throughout this whole program, I was still working, of course. Um, so, you know, working and saving so that I can fund. But I analysed and found hundreds and hundreds of sites. Um, and I give them to um, the planner, John McDermott, to, to have a look at and give us his or give me um, his information on what we could we get there. And I, you know, learned a lot from, from the, the various people who were within the power team. So hundreds and hundreds of sites I found, worked out what we could get for planning and analyzed them, analyzed the hell out of them and working out what profit we can make or what loss we would make and therefore bin it and, and move on. But it takes time. And when you've still got a day job, as many of us do, um, you know, it's about fitting it all in. So, you know, I was running around, that was me running around the clock um, trying to do everything. And I had lots of different tools, different spreadsheets. Um, and I would, you know, I'm, again, my background is project management. So I was quite good at keeping a, a single uh, tracker and to keeping myself accountable and reporting back to, to others to help me stay accountable. Um, now, of course, property is challenging. And 
you know, if anyone says that it's easy, it's just not, they're lying because property is definitely um, not easy. It's hard work and it takes some time. And you know, I went through many, many challenges myself trying to understand the end to end and the fear factor. So, you know, I was very fearful about getting it wrong. So getting the numbers wrong, getting the, what can, what could I get on the site, making an offer and making, you know, an idiot of myself. I was very fearful of doing that. So it stopped me from progressing and making offers. I was also missing opportunities because I wasn't getting there fast enough or I was seeing something and then forgetting about it later. Um, and, you know, my to-do list, like everybody, was to do everything. But you can't possibly fit in everything. And also then you start choosing what the easy tasks are rather than the things that are actually going to be more added value. Um, so, you know, I spent time trying to make deals stack when, to be honest, they just didn't. Um, you know, when we're trying to massage the numbers and they just don't work and it just wastes a lot of time. And also working out what some of the costs were, like build costs. I was at a loss, you know, what are those build costs? Um, and unrealistic vendors, I'm sure we've all come across those where somebody thinks, oh, somebody can make a killing from this. I'm going to, you know, I want a million quid for it. And it's just not worth it. Um, so we see lots and lots of that. Um, and then also complex uh, spreadsheets and financials. There's lots of different models for lots of different things. Um, and it was either very limited in terms of the tools that were there or there were just too many. So one day I might have been using Trello. The next thing I was using Excel. The next thing I was using my calendar. Um, and it was, it was just too messy. Um, so I, you know, I couldn't find one single tool to help me do that whole thing. And, you know, encompassing all of this was procrastination because, you know, we do. Everyone procrastinates at some point. Um, but with perseverance, we got offers accepted. Um, and then that became a turning point, which is amazing. But then we had a change in direction. Um, so in, where are we? 2019, at the beginning of the year, um, I was asked by John McDermott, the town planner, um, the principal planner in town planning expert, um, to go along to his boot camp, um, his planning workshop, and help property developers to um, run the numbers and make sure that, you know, when they're making offers, that the numbers do stack. Because lots of people are still doing things on the back of a fag packet and so on. Um, so I went along and I helped people. Some people, you know, very astute, don't need, don't need any help with um, spreadsheets or the finances. Others just wanted a bit of a sounding board and others, you know, appreciated a little bit more help. Um, but I came away from that week thinking, there's got to be a better way um, of doing this for all of us. I mean, this is painful for everybody. Um, so I thought, okay, great. I'm going to, I'm going to come away and I'm going to create a calculator that's online and people can use it. So that was my big idea in 2019 at the beginning of the year. Now, at the time, I was still a, um, a consultant and I was out in India. And every morning, because I only worked in the afternoon for a European hours, but in the mornings, I was around the pool and I had time to like think about stuff. And then this bang, this light bulb moment came to me and I thought, okay, so I'm going to build a calculator. Well, why can't I team up all of the software automation that I've done in the past for large corporations that save them loads and loads of money, like millions of pounds of money of cash. Why can't property developers benefit from that same functionality, those same features to help them do those value add? Um, so that they can do the value add and the system does the admin, system does the thinking, the system does the workflow. So that's what we did. And we came up with my PDA. Um, and again, my PDA is the property developer's assistant. And we'll move on to the next part of the, of the presentation. So, you know, it's all about prop tech now. Um, we're bringing the um, property development into, the, into this century um, and helping us, uh, helping everybody to uh, get tech savvy. So PropTech with my PDA, um, it helps us find and analyze deals. Um, you can build your development pipeline up. Um, so all of those new opportunities, you can track them um, and go back to them at a later date if necessary, particularly now, you know, with, with COVID, now is a fantastic time to um, capitalize on building the pipeline. So even if you're not making those offers yet, you know, start to build up the, the pipeline so that when you're ready to, you can make so many offers or even start getting those offers out. Because to be honest, you know, I've said before about cash is king. There are many people that would appreciate 
to be able to sell their property or their land because they need to free up their asset to get some cash. So we'd be doing them a favor. Um, yes, there is an opportunity to obviously get a lower price. And I've seen and heard um, about a lot of deals that are happening. So, um, so now is a great opportunity to do that. And my PDA helps you to track all of your progress around this. Um, and, you know, I said before, you know, working smarter, but my PDA will help save time. Um, and ultimately, we want to make more money, right? Um, and we've got the mobile coming out as well, or well, the mobile app is coming out in the next couple of weeks. Um, and, and it's an anywhere, anytime, and any device um, platform. So it's a software platform. But, you know, we say any device because mobile, some of the functionality we've got in there is, you know, see it, swipe it, save it. So if you, I said before about missing opportunities, so I've often, and I've talked to many people about this, you know, we go around, once you're into property, you see them everywhere. You see opportunities everywhere. And you might be driving or walking. And I always promise myself that I will come back to it later. I will remember where it is. Do I remember? No, never remember. Um, but with my PDA, you can do a find my location and it creates a project for you. You will never miss out on that opportunity again. Of course, at the moment, it's like stay home. Don't go out in the car to do this. But if we're out cycling or out walking, I was out the other day and I saw three opportunities, um, which I would never have seen actually in the car because it was down in you know, the back of a canal. Um, so, you know, my PDA is there to help property developers. Now, we decided to join forces with Andy and Lloyd of White Box. Um, you know, they were a big part of the, the learning curve for me and part of our power team along with their, the rest of their power team. Um, but Andy and Lloyd, they share our vision that want that because we want to revolutionize the property developers experience. So we're leveraging from their expertise, their know-how um, with my PDA. Um, so we're really thrilled to be working with them. Um, I'm not going to go through this in, in much detail, but you know, you can see one of the things we're very passionate about is supporting charities like against breast cancer. So secondary breast cancer, to find a cure so you know people like me um you know and others that there is a risk where it might come back or go somewhere else um that there's a cure they can find a cure for that because unfortunately that's probably what kills most most of us um that have had breast cancer previously um our core values and you'll see this in the in the demonstration simplicity user-friendly and we want to add value and this is all about encompassing a better work-life balance for us and our customers. So now I'm going to uh, give you a quick demo of a day in the life of um, property developer using my PDA. So I'm going to breathe. Um, so thank you for the moment. Please do support um, and go in and um, click the link, make a donation. That would be awesome. And while I, I just bring up my PDA and then I will share more with you. I'm just going to check the time as well. How am I doing for time, Josh? Uh, you've got another half an hour. So there's a couple of questions that have come in more about um, how you found work-life balance. Do you think that work-life balance definitely is achievable? Uh, where would you invest now? But we can run through those at the end. So yeah, half okay. an hour left. All right, fantastic. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to, if I can see this, I'm going to go into my PDA and share with you a little bit about it. <clears throat> um, so I'm not going to go through my PDA in loads and loads of detail. Some of you will have an account. If you haven't, you know, please feel free to sign up. It is absolutely free. Um, you know, we want to help people. Again, I've been there myself, been there and faced all of those challenges, as I mentioned. And, um, you know, we want to help people achieve more, um, but have more time back. Um, so there's a few things with my PDA. So the primary things are finding and analyzing deals really, really quickly. So analyzing them being a quick deal analysis, because we want to be able to qualify whether a deal will make us any money or not. If it doesn't, let's get rid of it or put it in our pipeline in case it's borderline for later. Um, but if it does, then great, because then we can actually go on and do the detailed financial appraisal and, um, and really spend time on it. So why waste time on something that's not going to work? Let's focus on things that do work. And that's why it, it can help us to do that. 
Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then, as I was saying before about building that pipeline, so I'm going to show you where you would go to, to view that. Um, so if you're new to my PDA and you were just starting out and you might think, OK, well, what do I do first? Now, this is a test site. And so I've got some some properties that also I've been looking at myself in here as well. Um, but there's a dashboard. So when you first log in, obviously, this is going to be blank. But this is where the accountability comes in. And I'm going to come back to this um, later once we've um, created a couple of projects. But it tracks everything you do. So if you've got if you want to keep yourself accountable to I want to find 100 sites this month and I want to make offers on 20 of them. Um, this tracks it for you so you don't have to go and then um, add it into some sort of spreadsheet. Um, but we'll come back to that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to do some site sourcing and that's finding new opportunities. Now, this is our first level. And um, at the moment, the availability is around Zoopla. So any listings, whether they're residential or commercial on Zoopla, that you can create an alert here um, by clicking the button, create an alert that says, OK, well, I want it to be in this particular area um, and in this postcode. And this is the distance. In the future, we will have other data sources pulled in. But for our first level, it's all about Zoopla because we're trying to find out what the appetite is from our users. Um, anywhere in here, always click over the information and you can see the information it's going to give you. But if you're creating a new alert, it will give you, um, it will return any listings that have been listed on Zoopla in the last 30 days. Um, because we don't want to overwhelm you with too many um, properties that it, that it returns. And we've given you a bit of a, a nice UI. Well, we think it's nice. Um, and there's like eight tiles per page. And it's a very quick visual. So you can see just by looking um, at a picture whether this might be something you're interested in looking at. So this one, land, that could be interesting, could even be a car park. All you need to do is, um, is click the picture and it takes you straight to the Zoopla account. But at the same time, um, I might actually be interested in looking at that further and I will just say create a project. So you can go through these one at a time and you can say, right, delete it or create it. Um, or you can say on that page, I've looked at them all, select them all, not interested in any of them and I'm just going to delete them. So it's a really nice, simple um, function for you to just run through them. So what it does, it returns loads and loads of um, listings from the last 30 days. And let's assume that you've, you've, done, you've worked through all of those 30 um, records or whatever they might be um, when you've first created your alert or you come back to it later. If that alert stays active, even though you've finished all of those tiles, keep it active. And then what happens tomorrow? Um, I would go to the dashboard and under task list here, I'll go to site sourcing and it will show me any new um, listings that have come up on Zoopla the night before. So it's not going to show me the same old ones again that I've already been through. It's going to show me new things that have come up. So that helps me target just based on new um, listings that have come up that I haven't yet worked. Um, and again, you know, it just updates your task list so that if you clear these tomorrow, they won't be there again. Um, so just a nice, um, easy way of, of setting up some. Um, some sites that you might want to find. So if I go to manage my projects, we've got five tabs here. Um, so we've got new projects. Now this is anything that you have found from Zoopla in that first sheet. And you'll see this, this is the one I just created. And the project name automatically defaults, it's from Zoopla. Now if I go and look at the edit um, information, you'll notice that a load of stuff is pre-populated. So it tells you what the asking price is, it gives you the URL link, it tells you what the project description is. It's already got the address and a map of the address, um, selling information. So you don't have to keep going back to Zoopla, but you can if because you've got the link. Um, development type. So is it a new build, extension, or conversion or renovation? Um, at the moment, it's one or the other. Um, in our next version, it'd be multiple choice. So let's say, yeah, I want to new build. I'm going to knock down what there is now. Um, and it might just be, um, say, 2,000 square foot. Um, let's say 3,000 square foot because I'm going to create um, two properties on that. I haven't even looked at it, but let's just say because this is this is what it's all about. A quick qualifier. Does this still work? Um, so then next, if I want to, I can upload a, a brochure and add some notes. 
Um, so if I just say um, car park, and then I update it and it creates a new project for me. And this is the project summary. Again, this is all the information that's come across directly from Zoopla. So I haven't had to do it myself. And, and down the bottom is an activity status. So my PDA has got some automated workflow built in. Um, and the activity status is saying right now it's pending a QDA. So QDA is the quick deal analysis. You'll see here some other options, um, off market letters, detailed financial appraisals and making those offers. This is some functionality that's coming in our next release. But for now, it's about helping everybody to, to quickly qualify that deal. So this is how quick it is to do. So I'm going to click quick deal analysis and it's just an input page. And some of these input fields are already populated and they come from two areas. So one, they come from your user settings in your user profile because we have some default settings and you can customize them. Anything that you've chosen to use will automatically populate in this QDA. But if, you, if you're working on a different project, perhaps in a different area versus your custom settings, you can change them in that specific project and it won't change your custom settings. So for this one, I'm saying I'm a limited company. I don't have anything else. It's going to be an SPV. I'm working in square foot. Um, it's a for sale. And I think that's, I'm going to assume that it's a commercial. It needs to know that for stamp duty. Um, you'll notice that the gross internal area has been pre-populated based on what the project said. It's a new build, £150 a square foot, because that's on my default settings. I'm going to build two units because I want them to be 1,500 square foot each. Um, I can change the number of months um, for the build or to sell. And this all calculates in the background the, um, and the profit. And you'll see the result in a second. Again, I can change the interest rate if I want to. But I'm just going to keep those there as standard. And let's say I had 10,000 other costs because I know that I'm going to have to demolish that small building. Maybe it's only 10,000. But maybe my GDV is going to be 1.5 million. Um, and all I will do, where, where is the um, asking price actually? So let's assume that the asking price, that was a bit fictitious. So let's assume it was 400,000. Just change that and say calculate the deal now. And there you go. Here it says... If you pay them 400 grand, you could potentially make 25% profit. And it's a thumbs up because my profit margin says for, for my settings, I want it to be a minimum of 20% after finance. Now, I can now play with that calculation here. And let's say as I offer them 450 and I calculate and I can see it gets me to 20%. So that's still within my range. And I can carry on <coughs> excuse me, um, changing that if I want to. And just scroll down, you can see information about the project. Again, it's all there for you. Um, it gives you a summary of what, what it is. If you need to go and change something, because perhaps you put in the wrong GIA or something, you can just go and change it. It keeps all of the information um, and then just say, update the deal now. Um, but now I'm going to save that just by closing it down. And it takes me back to my project summary which we've seen, it's changed the activity status to the QDA is now being completed. And then I'm going to go and view my history and it gives me um, an activity progress report for that specific project. So it knows I created it on the 26th um, and I did a QDA on the 26th. If I click the QDA button, I can go and look at the QDA that I saved. And this is the result that I saved. If I had saved calculation B, then that would be included, but I didn't. Um, and then, yeah, you can just go and have a look at it. Um, and then just very quickly, I'm going to show you two other things. So one is how easy it is to um, create your projects. So you can create a brand new one manually just by clicking here. And it takes you to the same um, screens that we saw previously when we were editing. You can upload images and so on. <clears throat> so I'm not going to do it because we've already been through one. Um, but you can also say create the project from my location. And again, particularly in the mobile app, you can say find my pin drop and say create or proceed and it creates that for you. Um, so I'm going to say, okay, it found my address and I'm creating that. And it's automatically put that under new projects. So it's gone from my location and I can go and add an image if I want to and then start working on it and going through that whole same process. Um, as, as your projects progress and you're taking action, 
then they will move to different buckets dependent on your activity status. So have a play around with that and, um, you know, and see how that fits. So going back to developing your um, pipeline, you can go and change your activity status and say, right, maybe you made an offer. Um, and you can see the activity status here, it's been rejected. So I made an offer previously and, um, and that offer was rejected. So I put in a, um, um, a follow-up date. If I go to the bottom here, offer rejected comes back to me on the 25th of April. Okay. Now, because I'd previously put in the 25th of April, that should now be here in my task list down here. So if I click pipeline, so I know that I had some rejected offers and I've got four tasks to go and look at. So I'm going to click the menu and it takes me to those four tasks. Now, these were some test sites that, that I did. But again, it helps you to organize and the time management. Um, and just to touch on very quickly about the user profile, um, this is where you'll put in your custom settings. So user settings here, we've got defaults and you'll see um, bill costs, for example. We've done some defaults on, in terms of bill costs or extension conversions and so on. It's, it's just an average across the UK. In our next version, in our next release, along with many other um, um, data sources or data points, we're going to bring that information in for you based on the region that you select. So when you do your detailed financial appraisal, it's going to automatically bring in your bill costs. So you can have confidence there. Um, and it's automatically going to collate all of the comparables in that particular area in the street. And then so you can have like a, a, a drop down box to select from. And that's just a couple of the things that are coming in the next release. Um, but as I was saying, you can choose to use the default settings or if you know, because uh, you're a builder, perhaps, and you know that you can build for £120 a square foot always, then you just change your custom settings. It's really super easy to do. Um, and that, that's probably it in a nutshell. So every time, just to re repeat on this, every time I manage one of my tasks, um, depending on what the activity changes, it will automatically update in my dashboard. So I'd identified sites, some of them from the property alerts from Zoopla, some of them um, from my location pin drop, and some of them I've created manually, um, and, it's, and it's tracked how many based on my custom settings of my targets, what do I want to achieve every month, um, and how many I've got to so far. So how many sites have I actually found? How many of those have I analyzed? And how many offers I've made? Um, keeps your track of all of your projects and then down the left hand side you can see any offers that I've got that are outstanding so all of the offers that might be pending or rejected or accepted as of that date and lots of different information on this um, so that is my PDA so Alice I think I probably bang on time with what I wanted to do in terms of the 45 minutes um, yep. And then, um, yeah, so hopefully, you know, everyone found that useful and I wasn't going too fast. Um, you know, the whole point about my PDA is it's supposed to be a simple and intuitive tool for everyone to use. And um, yeah, so that's what we're, we're quite keen to, um, to, to give to people. And that's why it's free. So the first version is free. So anybody can sign up and use this to their heart's content. And we hope they do. Uh, perfect. Uh, yeah, so yeah, some great feedback there. What questions do we have? Uh, so when is the app due out? Um, in a couple of weeks. So we are going to announce the, um, the date for the app this week. <coughs> Excuse me, this week coming. But it's out early May. And I'm super excited so about it. It's going it looks to great. be Android and Apple. Yes, it's both. And again, it's free. Perfect. Yeah. Someone says seems amazing. How are you monetizing this? It will be on our next release. So, um, you know, so we we want to give something back to people. I understand the yes. pain points. Um, you know, this is a tool that is very close to my heart. I've spent the last year on it um, and done nothing else apart from this. It's amazing how long these things take. And, you know, we've sunk money into that, obviously. Um, and we're trying to give something back. But in our next release, which gives you know, people that are very serious about property development and want to move to that next stage and make those offers, 
and um, we're going to have lots of nice features that are going to help property developers even more so that they can do things really quickly amazing uh, any more questions so what's in the pipeline for new features it would be good for other types of property strategies yes so um, I guess they're talking about things like HMOs, um, you know, service accommodation and so on. So for example, in our next level, um, there will be some extra calculations which give them the return on investment or the rental yields or the stress test and all of those things. So we're gonna be including all of those in our next release as well as, um, so we've got off-market letters. So, you know, press a button and it creates it for you because we've already got the data from the project. The same with offers, you know, we're doing the detailed financial appraisal and then it will be, um, you know, they like, they like what they see, they want to make an offer. And it's literally just press a button and it will create it for them based on some of their custom settings again. So we'll have new custom settings that allows users to put in their logos, for example, and some yeah. softer information about them. Um, and also a, a, a direct link into some of the service providers. So if somebody wants to go to a lender but has no idea what to ask the lender or give information to give the lender to get heads of terms, what we're doing is making that easy. Um, and we're working with some of the lenders to get templates and it will automatically populate it <clears throat> and then they can send it straight across. Same with planning and all sorts. Yeah, so it's definitely going to become quite a re really powerful tool. Um, so I suppose another question, so when developing the app what was the kind of the biggest hurdle you overcome whilst getting it to the finished product it is now um if i'm honest i would say um in terms of you know getting it out there to people to, to use the biggest issue that we faced <clears throat> excuse me was when we first launched was around the logon and i had made that a little bit complicated because um, we had a, a registration page and a sign up page, and I think it confused people. Um, so I learned some lessons from there. Um, but we've tried to simplify a lot of things within my PDA to help people. Um, and, you know, I guess in terms of the actual development, um, we, we use some outsourced service providers, um, you know, as part of our team. And it takes a lot of time and effort to, to work with them. They're, they're fantastic. But, and this is where I can leverage from my project management skills. And I've worked with many outsource providers before to make it happen in the efficient way that we wanted to. But there are always teething problems. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Certainly agree with that. Um, so you've got any more questions? We've got one here from Paul. So how does it look after site work? After site work? Yeah. What does he mean by that, do you know? Uh, Paul, do you expand a little bit on what you mean? Um, we'll get that one answered. That would be great. Uh, we've got another one. So with the second edition, how much is it likely to be? I know you probably can't say exactly or any, any give a rough indication maybe is what Sean's after. Yeah, sure. Well, ballpark figure, we're currently thinking or looking at, um, so it's an annual subscription. No, sorry. It's a monthly subscription. Um, and we're looking at about £99 a month. Um, annually, if people want to pay annually, then there'll be a slight discount for that. Yeah, perfect. I hope that helps, Sean. Uh, but, you know, in terms of the time it's going to save you, um, that is really going to be a, a small small investment in terms of the time savings on that, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so, any, uh, yeah, does it work in contingencies is a question we've got. Is there a contingency calculator built in? Yeah, so there's, um, so there's a contingency in there, which we currently, our defaults are at 10%, and the contingency is based on bill cost. Um, so that's 10%, but it can be changed. So you can either customize it because <clears throat> you might never, ever put in a contingency depending on the type of project you work on or you can change it per project. So it's super flexible in terms of that. And, and, in, our um, and in the next release, actually, that will be even more customizable. So we're going to have lots and lots of detail, goes down to lots of different levels. And every, you know, every lender is different. Every build is different. Um, you know, every site is different. So we're giving the people the opportunity to um, customize that as much as possible. Yeah. Um, so we've got another question. So do you offer training for anybody who's new to the software? Um, so we're not providing training courses. However, 
Um, we have been doing some webinars and I am going to kick off actually, I'm hoping this week um, I'm going to kick off a My PDA clinic, which is just going to be a free webinar or something on Facebook. Um, so I'll, I'll put something out on the link on that um, later um, just to help people. But we do have some tutorials um, in the My PDA app itself. So you can go and watch some videos. We've, we've changed a few things. We've, made, we've enhanced and made it a little bit better since we've done that. Um, but it gives you a good flavor of what that's all about. And we're actually looking at doing some animation um, to help people understand that end-to-end -end journey because it's all about simplicity and user-friendly um, um, user experiences. Yeah, absolutely. Certainly hope that one answers that. Um, so I think Paul's kind of pricing up brief of works, accountability, job list, materials. Is anything that in kind of planning the planning the build or the refurb? Yeah, we don't um, we don't go into the detail about the you know the site um, you know the next stages um, in terms of the build costs and so on. Um, but it's not to say that we won't one day. Um, you know, we want to steady state. We want to give people a tool that's going to help them. And if there is a an appetite to add on, then we're certainly going to look at that because we're going to continue to be innovative and give people what they want and need. We're not gonna develop things that we love, but everyone else is not gonna use. Yeah, um, perfect. So certainly that one covers that. Um, any more questions at all, guys? Uh, yeah, so we've got ones that don't necessarily relate to the My PDA app, um, but people are quite keen to hear what you're investing in at the moment. Well, um, so I continue to have a, a buy-to-let portfolio um, and I'm currently ploughing all of my money into my PDA, if I'm honest. So, um, you know, it's not a, a cheap thing to, to build. I've been on it for the last year and I'm not, um, I decided to go on this full time um, almost a year ago now. And I, so I'm not doing my consultancy business at the moment. Um, so, so yeah, so it's my PDA. We want to make this a really good tool because we don't believe there's anything else out there in the market and we're really, really excited about helping people um, to just be much more efficient. Okay, perfect. Um, if you weren't going full-time with the app, what would you be doing in property, especially in light of the current economic COVID-19 crisis? I would be building my pipeline and I would be purchasing land and property as cheap as I possibly could. Um, to to do that build to rent strategy and get that passive income at the end i would absolutely still be doing that yeah perfect um so paul can claire um recommend any apps like procore um that suits for the small developer procore i'm not sure i know about procore um what does he say what he's trying to achieve yeah. I think he might be looking more about project management rather than the whole kind of DNA analysis side. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I think it might be a bit different as to what the app actually is. Yeah. Um, uh, so at the moment, we don't, but, um, but that's uh, something that we're looking at, actually. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. We want to plug in yeah. to some, you know, apps that are already there for things like project management. Um, and the same goes, you know, we're not a site sourcing tool. So the likes of Nimbus or Land Insight, for example, um, you know, they are still the core tools that you can go and look at for off-market deals. We're not trying to replace that. We're trying to complement it. Um, so, you know, there's, we're looking at collaborating, for example, with Nimbus at the moment um, to, to make, make it a seamless journey for the users. Perfect. Um, so you've got someone here. Um, yeah, again, again, it kind of relates to the... Uh, um, yeah, so why is build to rent really appealing to you over other strategies? Um, it's because of the, the end goal. So we want to um, build up our portfolio in terms of our passive income. So for, <clears throat> excuse me, for us, excuse me, with our financial model, um, it makes more financial sense to us to keep the properties and rent them out for the long term. Yeah, perfect, Sean. You know, build to rent, it really is a fantastic model um, that allows you to really snowball um, and build up that asset base. Um, Gareth, did you outsource the app development to overseas program via Elance or similar? Um, we have outsourced it, yeah, and it is overseas. 
um, not Elance. So we, yeah, you know, we've used some standard, standard um, industry standards. So for example, <clears throat> we put out a formal RFP um, to get people to go and tend for, for the work. And again, with my project management background, I've, I've done lots of these RFPs with outsourced providers. Um, so I know the buzzwords and what to ask them and how to press the buttons. Um, so yeah, so we're very happy with who, who, we've, um, who we've been using. Perfect. Um, uh, okay, yeah, interesting question. Are you doing it, doing it limited company or personal name? Um, um, in my uh, PDA, is a limited build to company. Rent, the, build, uh, the build to rent, sorry. Um, limited company. Yeah, limited company does tend to be the way to go now, you know, especially if you've got a kind of trading business, even like an app or a new business, nine times out of ten, a limited company is going to be the way to do it. Yeah, um, for, ta for tax purposes, you know, that, that was the sensible thing for us to do. Yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, so I think that is all the questions. Let's just have a look at YouTube, make sure everything's fine. Perfect. Uh, what about auction properties? So does it pull anything from auction listings at all? Um, it doesn't at the moment, um, but again, we are going to be working with different data sources to try and pull that data. So it's a one-stop shop for people because I know what it's like when, <clears throat> you know, you go to Rightmove or you go to this site and then you create these alerts and they all go to your email um, yeah. and your email box then gets clogged up. And I, to be honest, I never look at them because there's nothing interesting. It's just a, an email. I want something visual. So we're going to try and bring in as much as we can. And again, you know, we're really open to lots of feedback from users. If you think it's something that would be a useful feature in the future, there's a contact us in the website. Please do go in and, and make some suggestions about my PDA. We'd love to hear from you. Okay, perfect. We've got one, one last question now. Um, is it possible to drill down and record lower level refurb activities and costs? Um, yes, but not in this level. Um, in the next release, it will be. So they'll be itemized yeah. and you'll be able to customize that and see the breakdown. Yeah, perfect. Fantastic answer. Uh, one last one. Is there a newsletter or mailing list that people can get on to stay up to date with the developments? Yeah, so um, if you um, sign up and then you're automatically on the mailing list, you know, signing up is free. So nobody needs to worry about that. Um, and then we can continue to um, provide you with updates on, on what's coming and when. Absolutely. So everybody just sign up. You know, it's free. It's a fantastic um, bit of software. I know I, for one, am definitely going to sign up off the back of that. It's, it really is going to save many hours of time, and especially with kind of the level of reinvestment that's happening with future developments. It really is a no brainer. Yeah. Now's the time to do it. So it's, it's www.mypda.co.uk. Perfect. Um, well, that's all we've got time for today, Claire. But thank you very much for your time. It's been a privilege um, and yeah, it's, it's been great. Thank you very much for having me. You know, it's my privilege actually. You know, it's been a fantastic event. You've got on some amazing um, content and speakers. So thank you very much for having me. And, um, and please everyone, just support the NHS and go and um, donate. Perfect. Thank you thank very much and I'll speak guys. to you soon. Brilliant. Thank you. Perfect. Bye.